So I'll tell you this. I am I I'm I'm a consultant and a lecturer. And so many a times people call and ask me, hey Chris, what's it cost to to chat with you for an hour? Um to hear the issues of my um hear the issues of my company and, and give me your thoughts and your feedback. And I, I tell them my hourly rates. Sometimes I say, well, you know, we're friends, we can talk. But if we're not friends, I, I say, well, this is my hourly rates and this is what I charge for a consulting session. Well, guess what? You guys have my attention <laughs> free of charge for the next hour um, to really dive into some of the issues that you're having with your social media and, you know, clarify some of the things that might have have crossed your mind in the last couple of days. So I really want to encourage you to take this time, um, use it well. So we, I do have one more short video to show you guys, and that's really the end of my content. But the next 30 minutes to an hour is really going to be spent listening to you, sharing your social media and digital marketing thoughts with each other and with me so that we can really make a point of difference in each of the individual brands that are here that's really why i felt like we needed to come through this today so i'm wanting you to give me give me your thoughts let me let me hear from you um what sort of light bulbs or what sort of concerns you guys are having specifically with your companies um on social and digital media Hi, good morning. This is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, my brand is Silks by Mish. And I just wanted to say that I was very, ex I am very inspired by your entire presentation um, and actually inspired to take action. So I have kind of put together in my mind what my brand stands for, but in terms of translating that into actionable items on the social media platform is where I'm kind of getting a little bit stuck. So, for example, my brand stands for, well, first of all, I'm targeting women over 50. And when women wear my clothing, they feel confident, you know, and I've removed a lot of pain points uh, for women over 50. Like my, my garments are floaty, so they, they're not tight. They are mostly knee length or long, so they don't have to worry about, you know, if it's age appropriate. So how do I translate yeah. that kind of vibe into locating one a community? Because the over 50 woman is not a very big community in Instagram, you know? Um, so where are they hiding? And then how can I really speak to that? Well, they may not necessarily be on Instagram, but they there are more of them on Facebook. Yes, so they are. That is definitely yeah. true. My major market is on Facebook. So that's a, a, a nice step. It's nice that you have a, an age demographic in addition to a, um, a psychographic. So when you're, if you were to do as a tactic, targeted, promoted posts via, um, via Facebook, you can target women of a particular age. Mm -hmm. And what's also interesting is sometimes women of a particular age have interests in other things around their age so for example i know my mother likes julie andrews um somebody who represented that generation of women um and that's just an example um mm. and if and many times if i'm doing a campaign for young people for a hip-hop brand i might put in as an interest when i'm building out the promotional booth put in drake as an interest or Rihanna as an interest, because people who like Drake are likely to like my brand. So it may not necessarily be that um, it's always going to be boys between 18 and 25. It might be a, a woman who is 35 years old, who likes dressing in menswear, um, who likes it because she likes the, the hip hop style. So I might find myself, you know, limiting if I'm looking for just the demographics. So I put in certain interest things. So maybe, you know, um, certain interests, and I'm just, get, I'm just shooting in the dark here, but things like sure. eat, pray, love, 
Ypres Love and Elizabeth Gilbert and Julie Andrews and interests that appeal to people who would wear your brand. So for example, again, if uh, the silhouette of your outfit, mm -hmm. of your garments, um, allow women to feel like, uh, um, uh, what's his name? His name Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. Um, then you can probably, through your boosting and through your interests, create content that represents things or create content or pre boost posts that represents things that they are interested in. So we had to go a bit deeper in the understanding of the target than just the women over 50. I think we need to, to think about women over 50 who want to wear outfits that flatter their bodies, who want to look like a particular celebrity or a particular person, who want to live a lifestyle that looks like this one. Um, mm -hmm. And then from the time you, you, you start to think about the, the, the aspiration of the consumer, um, then you're able to, and this is one tranche of content, then you're able to create slice of life or aspirational content that shows women feeling as though, or shows, shows women um, getting the feeling that they want to get through a relationship with this brand. And as I said before, your brand becomes a symbol of that representation of the things that they want to aspire to be like. In addition to that, you can speak you can think directly of the pains of your target group. Right. A big pain of, of target groups might be, um, and you know, I have to be sensitive here, it might be hiding varicose veins, or it might be um, wearing clothes that aren't difficult to put on, or um, it, it might be wearing clothes that are flexible and versatile that I can, I don't have to have multiple pieces, I can wear this piece in different circumstances. So once you recognize that there, there are certain pains that this particular target group has, you can create content that is not specific to the garment itself. You can now create a, a blog post that speaks about 10 ways to, to wear flattering clothes if you're over 50. So you now have a written piece that, that inspires women about how to dress. So now you're developing a relationship with them. You have a written piece that helps them um, on, on guiding them on how to dress at that age to feel mm -hmm. beautiful and to feel sexy that they can not only get value from, but they can share with their friends under the banner of your brand. You can also create graphic posts and infographic posts that help with the content, um, the content of, 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 of um, sorry, that help with, with them preparing themselves to dress. So maybe tips, checklists, um, maybe here is a list of, of the five things every woman over 50 needs to look fabulous. And so you're, 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 you become a champion of, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking generally here, maybe, you become a, a champion of being fabulous over 50, um, if that is the brand. Um, and yes. so it's not necessarily always about um, putting out, well, here is a specific piece that you can wear over your knee. Why do I need to wear it over my knee? You know, have, mm -hmm. the, have, the conversation, have the conversation about what being fabulous over 50 feels like, what it looks like, um, and, and, and create, conversation that is at the back of your mind as you create maybe blog posts or infographic posts that is adding so much value to your consumer base that they will not only get the value from it but they will want to share it with their friends and when they sh when, they, when they share infographics or graphics or blog posts that have truly helped them then their friends will 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 see it and you begin to grow your community organically through creating genuine value for these people. And then when you've created that genuine value, you, you, you continue this conversation about how, how to keep looking fabulous. So then, I mean, that's just one pillar that, that looking fabulous over 50. It might yes. very well, you might very well realize many women over 50 are moms and maybe- Millennial mom moms. Millennial moms. Yeah. yeah, and that they have their own unique set of needs and their own a unique set of aspirations and pains that you can create content to alleviate those pains and have this conversation um, going back and forth organically growing and when we talk about 
you realize that this, this content is valuable to maybe let's say 10 people. You now can create um, campaigns for user generated content where you might create a hashtag that says hashtag fabulous over 50 and, and invite them, not fabulous over 50 and hashtag suits by Mish. You invite them to, to upload content um, that, that points to, um, to them looking fabulous over 50 in whatever they're wearing. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever that means to them, maybe looking being fabulous over 50 might be a shot of them at the beach eating a bacon shark, or it might be a shot of them drinking a glass of wine, or it might be a shot of them in their clothes. But the point is, your brand becomes central to the conversation of being fabulous over 50, and you've given them an opportunity to post about it. And you tell them, if, if you post fabulous over 50, the person with the most likes on the post who's, who, who have used this hashtag effectively could win a dress from you. And people begin to, to people love to win stuff. They yes, begin to, yes. to really generate lots of conversation around that. And now in addition to that, you can decide, all right, well, I'm going to do a boosted post campaign where I'm going to invest 40 US dollars on promoting this particular conversation because I realize that this conversation is valuable. And now you start to target them very specifically. Yes, you target women over 50, but you might also target women who have interests in um, a lot of different things. When you understand their pains, you understand their interests. So I know varicose veins, as I said, might be an interest. Or um, somebody said, um, hiding your tummy. Or somebody said, hiding, you know, there are different things that, that women are actively interested in and, and consumers in general are actively interested in that your product can help them solve their problems for but rather than just pushing the product you really want to push the conversation about how to solve their problems and then your product finds itself in the conversation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow that has been so helpful i appreciate that piece of information i i really okay. did i have one more question though one sure. is um, I'm not sure what percentage um, of the information that goes into, say, stories, like what percentage of information do we post in, say, a story? How much goes into the pillar? How much goes into the feed? You know, how do you decide what's happening with your social media? When that, it is terms all, like, uh -huh. yeah, that, that is always going to be an individual answer. It's, there's okay. not a rule for for, for for any brands because your brand is unique and your customer your customer base is also unique. So okay. what I mean some basic tenets to take into consideration is that your story are that your stories are 24 hours long. You post a story yes. and it really only lasts there for 24 hours. So yes. messages that have a time are, are time bound make mm -hmm. sense to be in stories um, okay. as opposed to messages that last a longer period of time. So that's the first thing you, you, you have to ask yourself. Is this message something that needs to last longer or is this mm -hmm. message something that is going to expire at the end of 24 hours or maybe after 48 hours, which means that you might want to post the story twice or have the story evolve over time. But the first thing about stories is that they're time bound. Um, mm -hmm. The next thing is that if you were to just decide as a testing mechanism to put all of the same content on stories and all of the same content on posts for a month. Then after mm -hmm. that month, evaluation is key, right? So after that month, you go through your, your statistics and see how many of my stories led to direct messages because that's the call to action for stories, right? To, to message the page. Yes. How many of my stories led to, to direct messages? How many of my posts led to a like or a direct message or a sale or direction or for a conversion how many of each different type of, of content lead to a particular conversion and only after a month of, of testing you're really able to say well where my content is concerned stories work really well to this and mm -hmm. posts work really well to do that but the answer to your question is really you have to test it you have to test. Okay, I got it. Wow, that was a, a lot of information, Chris. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Great. Glad to help. I see the, the, the messages going very, very quickly. So let me see who I can read. Um, Kimberly is saying target kids. 
um, can also use kids purchasing for them, introduce them to your brand, associating or coupling with another brand like jewel, jewelry, like a jewelry brand for that age group, retailer like Peter, female that was LS Lee. I think he moved. Guys, are you going too quick with these questions? You know. I think he moved. Okay, yes, yes. Partnerships I was are thinking that she could target because their her, their kids may be online. So she could kind of market it in a way to target the kids to purchase for the parents and introduce the parents to the brand. And also maybe approach retailers like Peter, the one in Ellerslie, is the one that carries the target market that she has which is like above 50. the one in west mall is the younger one mm -hmm. but i think he moved from ellerslie to long circular but he hasn't opened long circular yet because of covid so to retail there as well yeah i think partnerships are a really great avenue for you to increase your um your audience because now you're opening up yourself to a whole new audience of people, which leads me to this topic of influencers. So I want to just, I'm actually just dragging in a slide right now that helps you to really um, define influencers and influence. So influencers are a really great way of exposing your brand to a new audience so if you were if you were to use an influencer and many influencers charge um a couple hundred dollars per post or you know depending on the relationship you have with an influencer you can work out um something so once you recognize okay my target audience sees this person as an influencer maybe i want to engage them in an influencer campaign these are some of the things that I, I'd like you to think about. Um, how brands select influencers. Brands select influencers through shared brand values. Which remember, we, we spent so much time talking about articulating your values and understanding your value system because you really, really, really want to have an influencer who shares your value system. You don't want to use an influencer at all who is not in alignment with your brand's value. So it's not just about, well, if we could afford Marshall, let's get Marshall to wear our clothes or let's get Bungie to wear our clothes just because there are celebrities. You want to find influencers who really represent your brand in a way that embodies your value system. So for example, you'll remember B Mobile and Marshall Montano had a had a, a, a endorsement agreement and then very shortly after not very short sometime after b mobile had dropped marshall as an endorser because marshall was in court for violence and all sorts of different things that were really not in alignment with b mobile's value system anymore so b mobile felt as though we can no longer have marshall continue to represent this brand despite the fact that he is the biggest brand in the country the biggest influence in the country we really can't have him represent this brand anymore because his value system doesn't seem to be aligning with our value system you also want him to check out the reach and their engagement because it's one thing for an influencer to have fifty thousand followers but it's quite another thing for an influencer to put out a post and have that post highly engaged or used um or, or used to to convert consumers you really want to be able to make sure that you can check to see if this influencer has a lot of likes a lot of shares or those types of things um why brands use influencers to enhance content calendar efforts to increase traffic and to support the, their campaigns so as we create content and we want to show a particular lifestyle, a particular representation of how people use our products and our brands, we, we could think about, well, maybe an influencer would fit in well in this conversation. Coming back to this, this idea of the Wanderer um, brand, the, the free-spirited brand, is there a person, is there a, an influencer with a significant reach who embodies that value system that you can partner with to gain access to their followers because more than likely if that influencer embodies that value system then their consumers their followers will 
be aspiring to be to have a value to, 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 to have a lifestyle like theirs and if you pair your brand with that lifestyle or with that influencer it really exposes you in a genuine way to their following how do you measure influence by the number of shares the number of likes the number of engagements the number of hashtags they get people to use the number of comments and most importantly the growth in the following that you can you can have um for example recently domino's pizza had a um a little influencer campaign with dj anna and ultra simo on friday evening um last friday evening dj anna hosted an online party i don't know if any of you were there hosted an online party that was sponsored by Domino's and there was a lot of pizza giveaways um, from Domino's Pizza. Which, by the way, I could give away a Domino's Pizza. I think I will. I think today I will allow Domino's to sponsor the next hour and give away a Domino's Pizza to somebody. I'll tell you all the rules just now. Anyway. Um, Anyway, so the yeah, so you after that 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 event that DJ Anna held with, with Ultra Simo, um the Domino's page grew significantly because the conversation was about fun on a Friday evening eating pizza and Anna was able to get her friends to her followers to go to Domino's page and so the, the influence was measured in the growth in following. Um, also, there are really three types of influencers that I want you guys to be aware of, because I don't want you to, to go into the, this, this idea of utilizing brand influencers without really appreciating that there are different types of influencers. So the three influencers that we're looking at are, one, the elevated consumer, otherwise known as the brand influencer, two, the professional, otherwise known as the content influencer, and three, the celebrity, otherwise known as the campaign influencer. So if we were to use a brand influencer, we would be using that brand influencer to drive a particular discussion. These influencers are everyday consumers with a decent following and strong interest in the brand or category, great for customer-facing products and services. Let me give you an example. So if you realize that over a month, you've been posting content and every time you post content, there is this particular consumer who comments on the content and says something really meaningful or really helpful to the conversation. So for example, if um, Kavir were to post, I keep mixing up Kavir and Kiran, it's Kavir I want to talk about. If Kavir were to post a how-to guide on um, upcycling a, 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 a t-shirt or repurposing a, a t-shirt, and I'm using t-shirt just loosely, recycling a t-shirt or using materials from around the house to style a t-shirt so that you, you can be sustainable. And then somebody, let's call them Gregory, Gregory jumps into the comments and gives a whole lot more value, you know, really contributes to the conversation and gives value to the other consumers, so much so that the other consumers are thanking Gregory and saying, Gregory, this is great content, thank you. And so Gregory becomes a major part of that conversation. What you want, what Kavir wants, would want to do is to reach out to Gregory and thank Gregory and even maybe give Gregory some free product to say, hey, you know what, I appreciate what you're doing, keep doing it. You don't necessarily want to pay Gregory because then you will take away from the authenticity of the relationship between the brand and the consumer, but you do want to recognize that Gregory is uh, an influencer in his own right. And so you want to make sure that you recognize Gregory and you reward Gregory. And that's your elevated consumer. That is your influencer in that space. And in many times, if you reward Gregory effectively, or at least recognize Gregory effectively, he will keep doing what he's doing. And that is going to keep exposing your products and your content to his consumers. And he's going to continue to be an advocate for your brand. And for those of us who don't have a lot of money to spend on marketing, this is a really great way to build relationships through influence online. 
Does that make sense? Um, then we're looking at the professional or the content influencer. Um, this influencer, they use lots of value in the B2B market, but there's also value in the B2C market. These influencers work great in, in, in the tech industry and they will also work well in the fashion industry. An influencer who is an authority on the product category. So for example, if you can if you had an influencer like um who's an authority in the fashion industry you know there are a lot of photographers who are authorities in the fashion industry i want to maybe give an example um cook thomas cook used to write a, a blog on um makeup in well i don't i think it was an article on makeup in the, the guardian or the express some time ago and he had positioned himself as an authority on makeup so if you are a, a, a creator of a makeup brand, you might want to reach out to Kirk and, and have Kirk write a story for you. Um, also an authority on fashion business is Fashion TT. If you were to, Fashion TT puts out content all the time. Sometimes they interview brands. Many of you have been interviewed by Fashion TT. Um, if you were to make your, your brand um, relevant to Fashion TT's community, or other fashion authorities like Fashion Focus. I don't know if you, you guys remember Filtered Fashion Magazine or those other fashion publications or, fa or what's this girl, um, No More Fashion Victims. You know, there are people who write specifically about fashion who you may want to get into a conversation with or who you may want to, to get them to write about your content. Reach out to those people and see if you can get an, uh, get yourself featured in in an article or featured in a story or interviewed in an Instagram live or you know those types of things. That's where your content influencer comes in to be able. Stephanie Ram Logan, yes, no more fashion victims. You reach out to those people and Mel Gabriel for um Trinidad Lookbook. There are a lot of people who are creating content about our industry. And it may not necessarily just be about our fashion industry, yeah? because you could speak, you can reach out to people who write for women over 40. So, for example, there is a, a brand um, called Forward 40. She, that brand speak, has a large community of women over 40, and she's trying to solve their problems in many ways. So you can reach out to her and other people like that who are speaking to consumers that you care about to be able to get your conversation going in that space. And that could be a strategic part of your influencer campaign. And then finally, the celebrity or the campaign influencer. And that's the most common influencers that we're accustomed to seeing. We're accustomed to seeing the, 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 the influencers with large followings. Now, the, this is the, the Destras and the, 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 um, the Marshalls and those people who have um, celebrity status. So people, um, the influencers fame drives interest and desire, usually selected based on their massive online following. Now, I made a reference to some to this girl, Anastasia Mutu. Anastasia Mutu is like a Kim Kardashian. So it's somewhere between the celebrity influencer and the content influencer. That person who has a large celebrity following, but is also an authority on a particular lifestyle. So she's a, an authority on a, a particular lifestyle. And so it, it is a nice space for fashion industry brands to be in. So this sort of goes to answering that question of how do I expose myself to wider audiences um, through influencers and through brand partnerships. I'm just scrolling back up and I'm reading Akila. How do we start? Overly curated feeds are no longer engaging and sometimes we don't want to spend $10,000 because it's just not profitable. I'll tell you this, Akila, I've never spent $10,000 on a, a social media campaign for any brand. That's a lot of money um, to get about 20 images because as a brand, or oh, photo shoot, um, because as a brand, stop it. Okay, every time you type something, <laughs> like I, it drops down to the bottom, so I can't read it. So give me a, a moment to read it. Um, to get about 20 images because as a brand, we want to have good content at least three times weekly and have high quality imagery. I think starting the feed sometimes is, a, is the hardest part and drives leads to the actual digital platform, website, and social media. Okay, so photo shoots are one aspect of content, uh, of your content. And yes, photo shoots can be expensive, especially if you want to do fantastically fabulous photo shoots. 
So I'm not going to discredit the value of good photography and the cost of a, a, a great photo shoot. What I will say is that you have to, to really get the most value out of a photo shoot. So if you're spending 10K on a photo shoot, that should be content that you use for a very long time. It should not be a photo shoot that gives you one post or one month of posts. It should be able to give you content for a long time. And so you have to be creative about how you approach this photo shoot to really last a long time. And don't spend $10,000 on a photo shoot if you only have enough product to make you $5,000 back. If you get what I'm saying, you know, you're looking at ROI and you want to make sure that if you're spending $10,000 on a photo shoot, that your product and your value gives you back enough return that you've covered all of your production costs and make a profit so you have to be really careful about how much money is spent on production which is why i spent some time yesterday talking about nimble content creation and creating content on your own i encourage you guys to buy a light box a light box is 20 25 us dollars on amazon buy a light box use your smartphone and take some product for photos for yourself so that you don't have very heavy costs on creating content. Um, and, and you can mix that with some curated content and also create content like graphic posts, blog posts, infographic posts, and other types of content that are not largely dependent on um, external resources to do, but still bring value to your consumer. Because remember, the focus of your social media content has to be to generate a relationship with the consumer by bringing value to them. And it's not always about photos of your product that gives them value. So if you think about ways to give them value, think about um, listicles like 10 things you can do to do this or 10 things to dress well or, or five steps to, to to hiding belly fat or you know different types of things that you can do to join our conversation five ways to, to be more environmentally conscious in your fashion five ways to, to help other people here are five centers that you can give your used clothes to if you want to give recycled clothes to someone else there are, there's a lot of different content that you can create that brings value to your consumers over time um, that helps you to generate a relationship with them and helps them to love your brand so much that they share it with their friends. Does that make sense, guys? What's your thought on posting in your IG feed images used on other people's pages? So in essence, that is curating content. And I have absolutely no problems with curating content at all. If there is content that already exists exists somewhere else that brings value to your consumer group and is in alignment with your value system and your belief system, by all means, repost. Now, we have some general rules of reposting content ethically, and it's as simple as, re uh, as tag tagging the person whose content you're getting it from, so stating your source and giving reverence to who created the content in the first place. Do not repost someone's content and pretend it's yours yes getting permission to post is ideal it's not always easy to get permission to post from the, the, the person who created it but if you if, if you must post something that you don't have permission to post state your source tag the source so that they're aware that you're posting it for the most part people who put their information out into the the social in out into the internet especially brands would be very, very happy to know that, that, that their content is being reposted because it means that you are sharing their content to a new audience of people who share the same value system. So they would be happy that your content is reposted, but it would really, really, really suck if you didn't state the source, if you didn't say, this is where I got the content from. That's where you become, steal. That's where you become a, a thief. You're stealing. <laughs> Sorry, you're stealing their content and masking it as your own, and that is a no-no. <clears throat> but Chris, I have a, a point here. Um, like I, I think of of brands where I follow. Say, say for example, um, particular self-help people. Uh, if they 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 make the ones that make their their own images. I think it, it it elevates the the business quite a bit and gives them you know 
a lot more credibility. Um, my position is that, you know, the, the, the time and the effort and the branding that, that, that goes into some of this, some of the images is so, so time consuming. Um, you know, sometimes I feel just, just an image, that, you know, is, but I, I, I think that it's good. It's, it's okay to repost as well. If it says anything, but I think that if you if you did your own, it will elevate your brand plenty. Yeah, I'm with you on both points. I'm actually also an advocate for a higher percentage of created content over curated content. And sometimes I might even find content that inspires me and recreate it or, re or create it in my own approach because I like content that is, is branded with my design aesthetic. I, yes. I, I feel like your Instagram and your Facebook, you really want to, to keep pushing your, your brand fonts and your brand colors and your own way of writing, your own tone and your own voice. And yeah. that's really a nicer way to approach it. Now, in terms of the time consuming thing, it is time consuming to create content. It is a whole job and I'm not going to diminish how important it is to spend um, time doing marketing. Marketing is really not something that is that can be looked at as a by the way thing. It is quite time consuming, but there are tools. So like Canva is a tool that I have really fallen in love with um, because it, it, it really, it had, there are so many templates. When, once you use Canva, you don't, you, you don't have to know the size of a, a, a of a particular post, you just say, listen, I'm going to post, a, I, I need to post a story, uh, a, a, a post for Instagram stories, and they, it's already pre-sized. You can say you want something in the fashion industry, it's already pre-designed, and you just have to right. tailor it to your own design. So that cuts down a lot of time. And especially if you were to use the upgraded version of Canva, I feel like the sky's the limit with that upgraded version. It's really, okay. really valuable. Right. And then in terms of scheduling and that sort of thing, Hootsuite and Buffer, <laughs> Yeah. Um, Katrina saying it must give credit to the source. I made a, a picture from a photographer I didn't know, and he was so happy that I wanted it too. Sorry. Huh? Okay. Okay. Good morning, if I may. Hi. Good morning. Um, so Good morning. to kind of touch, um, Dominic here. So to kind of touch on Hi, something Dom. that I feel is always left out of. Um, the layman or the person who is building the business and doesn't necessarily understand the uh, complete or absolute importance of all these elements is that good business ideas or ideals evolve from storytelling. So it's the same kind of life lesson that I have always um, applied to my brand. Um, and I spoke about it a little bit in last time with marketing. Marketing is an ongoing thing. You never stop marketing. There's always room for um, re, re, reformulating, rejuvenating, to reconnect. Um, and you really should have some kind of understanding of your brand from a story perspective. And that allows you to always have continuity. There's always fresh ideas. There's always something that you can add. My brand is Indigenous Design. When I was coming up with the the logo motif for instance i wanted it to say something a little bit more not only because i'm a little more sensitive to things and ideas and how they develop but um that i wanted to say how do i get there's so many people talking about uh who have become very sensitive to society and environment and eco-friendliness and all that how do i talk about the historic factor of indigenous and indigenousness and I came up with the fact that each and every one of us as individuals are unique in our own sense. Even identical twins do not have um, complete and absolute um, duplicated mapping. There's still little elements within their DNA that make them unique in their own in their own way. And I came up with the thumbprint, which was the one thing for sure that we can identify. No two people really have the absolute um, duplicated dna in that respect and i'm just saying this because kaviri talk about a lot about it sometimes we have to put in time for some things that would be monumental or the foundation elements of what we're doing in terms of building our business um so we should put in time into some elements don't care how long it takes it took me a while to get it right because there's always room for improvement 
um, and you turn it into like something that is a, a, a must do, relaxed kind of, uh, of activity that allows you to want to be motivated to do it and to want you to always be involved in continuity. So I just wanted to share that because sometimes I think that element of it is left out. We talk a lot of technical things, but there are a lot of indirect technicalities that we must involve ourselves with if we really want to elevate the general, the general practice of what it is that we hope to achieve in the end. So that's just something I wanted to share. I, I appreciate that and I endorse that. I think that the the idea of marketing as an ongoing practice, as something that we we do without stress. It's it's a, a and you know I've been a marketer my my whole adult life, and my approach to marketing is that I get inspired by everything. I'm someone who every time I'm anywhere, I have a pen and a paper that's available to me to capture my ideas. If I don't have my phone to capture my ideas because you can be inspired to create content at any given time and you just write down the content idea. And when you get to the, the, the time where you're sitting and creating a content calendar, you have a, a, a plethora of ideas available to you that you've been inspired by. So it's something that you keep, you keep doing, you keep putting forward, you keep creating content. And as Gary Vee would say, you know, you just keep creating content every single day. Use your phone, take pictures, write notes, and just keep creating content in a relaxed manner. I love that you said that, Dominic, in a relaxed manner, so that when you're sitting down to populate your content calendar, you're not just depending on that moment to be inspired and to, to, to drop all of this information in at the same time. I have a video as you were talking there now. I mean, I, I teach so many of these classes that I, I, I have so much content that I, I think is valuable to everyone. I have a, a short video on, well, it's, a bit, it's probably about six minutes long, um, that is on brand storytelling. Um, and I want to play it for you guys, but I have one caution. There is one, there is a little bit of profanity in the video so i just want to confirm that we're all adults and um we could handle you know these you know europeans and americans make out make, bring a point across in a cross way sometimes so that's just the one question i have for this video so i want to give a disclaimer on it before i play it <laughs> For a lot of brands, I think it's hard for them to grasp that like, brands on internet that actually succeed, they do a lot of mix of everything. One video can be a PR thing at the same time as it's marketing, sales, and social media content. <laughs> We're traditionally making stuff, you know, new stuff all the time. For every channel, we have to make things independently. I don't believe in that. I don't think that's the way to go in the future. I think that the best way that you as a brand can really do stuff today is to build a whole concept, like a greater concept, like a documentary or a film or any big story. And it should probably be your story, like as a brand, maybe. Or it should be something that's related to that. But if you have that, then start documenting that. Hello? Don't worry. I've been using it for seven years. Do you get stuck? No, I've never got stuck. I'll tell you something funny about this elevator. Yeah, sure. Yeah, people, once I, okay, this is going to sound weird. Just once I got into this elevator and there was a weird smell, I kind of didn't know what it was, but apparently someone was masturbating me. I've never been a bad thing for such a day. Like, at last, I had to do it. Or else my person would be a pretty thing. That's how we would have had with me, with my, with my fiance. 
And if you are a brand that does, for instance, gels, I've worked with Morton, which does exactly this. They have on board the best marathon runners in the world. The ones that win the world records. So having those influencers, that should tickle down, right, to sales. It doesn't necessarily do that. Maybe that doesn't translate to the community that actually is buying stuff. You get the community involved in a different way today. You can, of course, inspire and, for instance, do a talk about these famous world athletes. And that's also going to get shared and the people will get inspired by that. But it could just as well get inspired by the people that are the community themselves. So build stories around whatever is essential to what you stand for and what you want to sell, essentially, as a lifestyle. Build something around that. So let's say we make a talk about ultra marathon runners, maybe. So you follow them. You follow them for a course of a couple of months or something. If you do that properly, if you have a thought about it, if you make one feature film or one web series or whatever it is, all that material and work that you put in could just be like a month's time in terms of production. If you put all that effort in, that could tickle into maybe two years at least of content for your social media and branding. You shouldn't see them as separate. You should focus on one project being you know, your whole narrative for the coming years. You should build something around one story that you then work and get the people engaged in because it takes time to get people involved in something. So don't just make one-off like short commercial stuff because you can do that from that material. If you shoot a whole series of things for a month or for two months or even for a year, if you do that, you have you know, material that you can reuse for the short commercials, for the spots on Instagram, for the Facebook ads, for even your TV ads. But do not do it as separate things. Like bring all your resources together. That's the way you should do it. It doesn't make sense to do it any other way to me. A big rant, but this is like crucial if you want to succeed with content creation. Everybody knows this that does YouTube or any social media stuff. You need to get so much out of your efforts, otherwise you can't be consistent. You should aim to upload at least like five times a week. If you're on Instagram, at least once a day. So it's really hard if you're you know, always depending on coming up with new projects and not generating enough from the projects you have. It doesn't make sense, not at all. So get your shit together, because that's the only way you will you know, get stuff made. Any thoughts, guys? Hi, hi. What's today? Hello, Chris. Hi, Sabrina. Yes, hi. Looking at that video, um, I mean, the accent was a little bit thick, but, you know, just getting the gist of what it is you were saying in terms of using that your content or whatever or whatever you create for longevity. Yeah. Because of my brand being that Carnival Monday where every year I come up with a different theme. Yeah. So what happens is that I have to get fresh content or, you know, the curated ones as well as, you know, the ones where, you know, your masqueraders wear or your people wear, your clients wear your stuff and, you know, you have to, um, you put it, you have that to put up or whatever. But every year I have to go through a process of getting new content. Um, so that is photography and videography and all those things. So it's not, so it's not like I can, say well i could just do this and it will last me two years because within that year i still have to do other things now to show that my brand is versatile so yeah. like for instance how i try to design my stuff is that is like monday where you could wear everywhere 
So where, you know, all right, when I am when I start my my campaign, it would be where it is a Monday where peace for uh Trinidad but but as it goes up into the carnival, it turns out to be like a a party wear. So you can now pair it with something. With like if it's a jeans or a skirt or a throw that you want to go to a pool party with, you know. So for me, it's like, okay, all right. It's like coming up with all these ideas to translate the brand take goes from one um, into another or just versatility then, you know? And that's yeah, why I have problems where I have to sit down and I, I realize that I am being bugged down by creating content um, and that time to create or to, to be creative in terms of coming up with new designs, it kind of takes a toll on me. And I am very meticulous and particular and sometimes a little too fussy, I find. So, yeah. um, you know, that is my thing there. And coming up, I think I don't, sometimes I feel I don't have the capacity to even think, to come up with an idea as to, yes, I know my customer, who I need to target or my target audience, you know, they're party goers, they're into that whole carnival chasing. I know all of those things. But it's like sometimes I, my brain just does not, cannot, or sometimes cannot just come up with any sort of creativity to be like, okay, this is what I am going to do, you know, like, I am stuck. And yeah. Yeah, that I is how, that. yeah, so I don't know if you can help in that way. Well, that was a lot of a lot of information you just shared there. Thanks for sharing. I think that where in the context of creating this one brand story, you you're basically saying that you know every year your you 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 shift the conversation or push the conversation into a new direction because you launch a new collection every year, and it's a collection that has a transferability um, from on the road on Monday and Tuesday into events that, and all sorts of different um all sorts of different ways that you can represent or wear this fashion. Now the question is what is what am I wearing when I wear your 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 brand? What what am what am I representing when I walk around wearing your brand? And how how am I supposed to feel or how do I feel when I'm wearing that brand? And if you can own into that one story that describes that one feeling um, of what what this is and create one extended bit of content. Now, I'm not saying that what that video we just looked at is the only approach to creating content, but just to sort of push that approach forward a little bit. When we get to that one idea of I'm I'm let's just say this year you're a fighter for justice and you're creating a, a, a brand that a, a line that is inspired by military wear, just for example. And so a fighter for justice might really be, be recognized in so many different ways. You know, there are police officers who are fighters for justice. There are parents who are fighters for justice. There are children who are fighters for justice. There are so many different ways being a fighter for justice can be represented. And if you were to do uh, a, 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 an interview series of different fighters for justice, you interviewed a hundred different people who fight for justice in different parts of their life and use that as content for a few months, what, what you're doing is representing your brand in such a way that you represent or you are the symbol for people who fight for justice. And so if I wear your product, on the road for Monday or to a party or at home, I'm representing either that child who is stopping bull bullying in his school or that mother who is protecting her children from whatever elements she needs to protect her children from or anybody who is, is fighting for justice just as a theme, for example. It's really just an idea of creating a conversation about your value system and then having that conversation be translated onto clothes that become a symbol of the conversation. Um, that, and that's really where that one story sort of comes in. Um, I think that's my response there. 
Okay. Um, yes, I understand what you're saying. So, um, in yeah, so yeah, I can I get what it is you're saying. Um, so now I know that I need to probably just work a little harder on, you know, just taking it away from what the brand or what the clothing item is, and now translating it into something else that people could be in contact or uh, could understand. You yes, know, so the job of the marketer and the job of the content. So, I mean, we, we know that as entrepreneurs, we wear multiple hats, but you have to recognize that the marketing and the, the cre yes, it's, they're both creative endeavors to a great extent, but the marketing planning and developing is a hat all on its own. And so you have to put on your I'm in customer engagement mode. And in many times, I think from, you know, it, it engaging with, with, with many creatives in different forms, when you are creating music or when you're creating fashion or when you're creating anything on the whole, you really want, a lot of times we want to connect with ourselves and we want to understand what we are feeling and we want to create our products based on our, our understanding of what's happening inside of us. And that's beautiful and that's fine. But when we are creating marketing campaigns, we have to take off the hat of the, the internal creator and put on the hat of the empath and start to empathize with the consumer and try to understand what are their issues and how can what I have created solve the problems of that they have. You know, it's, it's, it, you have to be able to really put yourselves in the shoes of the consumer and help them fill their needs with your marketing content. And if you want to use that information, that insight you get from the consumer to help improve your product or innovate on your designs, that's up to you. But to be able to create content that resonates with them, you have to think about them. Okay, I, I got you. I understand what you're saying. And I think that will help a lot because, you know, sometimes you get kind of stuck with, you know, just putting out your stuff um, what it is only and just hoping that okay somebody would just run run and buy it and that is not the case most times you have to really sell them on you know what 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 that particular like for instance that like this year I did my theme was royalty you know sell them yeah. on that you know the whole royalty lifestyle which I kind of tried to do but it did it was not effective because probably I did not sit down and really come up with a proper strategy as to yeah, how yeah. to go about doing that so yeah. it's a it's little more work, work. Yeah, it, it is it is work it, it is work and i have tried in this workshop to provide you guys with some of the structures to put your put your thinking in the right direction and to keep your thinking efficient to put out exactly what needs to be put out so that you don't put out too much effort but you also don't put out too little Okay, thank you very much, Chris. It was it, this is insightful because even like the whole avatar thing, you know, to create that, I never really created that um, aspect of it. So by doing that, I can have an I have a better idea as to how I can go forward, knowing the people that I'm targeting. So now I could come up with themes or you know um, collections that speaks to 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 that group of people, um, you know, that I have already and who could now put that out to other people who may want that or believe in that type of uh, vibe that i'm trying to push with my theme and, or my collection and using the those that those um personas that um understanding of your consumer when you do decide to, to invest any money in facebook posting and and that sort of thing you can really go back to your persona go back to the the opportunities the needs the, the headaches, the pains of your consumer and target them based on what their interests are. So you go beyond targeting people for their age and their gender. All right, guys, so we're at, we're just at 11.55. So we have just about five more minutes before we end the session. I'm going to play a video I, I, I found is valuable that I found on, on, on online, I found on YouTube, just to give you a sort of introduction and a step-by-step -step into Facebook shop. I do expect now Facebook shop leads into e-commerce management and is really outside of the scope of this digital marketing strategy course. But because Facebook shop is the newest 
um, innovation coming out of Facebook, which I personally, personally believe has changed the game of retail e-commerce and, and the fashion industry around the world has changed the game. I thought it was very important that I just have a, a quick conversation about setting up a Facebook shop. So let me play this video for you guys. And then of course, after this, I expect that once you're interested in doing Facebook shop, you would go and do your own research. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create Facebook shop on any Facebook business page. Before we proceed, make sure you subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get daily tech videos. Let's get started. The shop feature is rolling out to all Facebook pages and you can easily create a shop by adding products from a catalog and then sell them directly from your page. To create a shop on your Facebook business page, you first have to add the shop tab. For that, you go to the tabs and templates section in page settings. Scroll down, add a new tab, and from the list that it shows select shop. You can even change its position by simply dragging it. Now go back to the page and then you will see a shop tab there that you can use to sell your products. Click on shop and then create your first product there. Just click on the create button and specify a product image with its name and details. Mention price and check out URL. You can add multiple product images and select images from your page. Now simply publish your product and it will be available in the shop section on your page. You can just visit your page from the incognito window and see it for yourself. This way, you can add more products to your shop and simply post them on your page as well so people can buy. That's it. This is how you can create Facebook shop on any business page and sell anything you want. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and, and that's it. So I, I don't mean to be endorsing other brands webinars but I retweeted, so you can check out my Twitter, I retweeted for you guys the Republic Bank um, webinar that's happening this week on e-commerce. Yes, it is very simple, Natalie, which is why I felt it was important for you to not be overwhelmed by Facebook Shop. It's really simple and a nice way for entrepreneurs and retailers to add their products to Facebook. Um, so um, what I'm suggesting, check out the Republic Bank webinar on e-commerce. Let's go, let's have the fashion industry represented. I've already registered. Go register it and let's go ask the right questions about our fashion industry to, to make sure that we rep, we, we, we're, we're able and enabled to set up our e-commerce platforms because the new normal is real. We really, yes, I know that retail stores and malls and stuff would be opening in the next phase of this government recovery plan. But the fact is, Competition online has changed. Consumer behavior online has changed. And we need to be able to meet consumers where they are. And the conversation about e-commerce is happening in Trinidad right now. And we've been complaining for many years that it's not happening. Why aren't the banks having a conversation about e-commerce? What's going on? When am I going to be able to sell my products online and deliver directly to my customers? The time is now, guys. Now we've the, the banks are all having these conversations and, and we want to be able to ask the right questions to get ourselves ready for this new normal. Um, I, I hope you have enjoyed and really been inspired by this, this session. Um, I am very, very passionate about marketing and digital marketing. And so I, I hope that I excited you guys to, to really um, get your shit together. You know, <laughs> I know many of us are in, are in different levels of, of our understanding of digital marketing and, and it's going to be a journey. It's not something that I woke up one day and found that I know everything about marketing. It's something that I read every single day um, to, to really sharpen my skills so that when clients come to me, I can give them the absolute best advice for where they are. Um, so you guys do do your research and and just be brave and test it's really very important for you to test content put it out there and see how it, it works so that the next month you can you can keep getting better it's not about being great on the first time it's about being great over time so um i don't know if anybody from fashion tt is here who wants to make any final statements but if not I'm going to make my way out. Um, you guys have my contact information. I'm, I'm hey. here, Chris. <laughs> hey, Lisa.
Hey, hey, thanks so much for an excellent session as always. Um, I'm seeing all the responses in the chat, great reviews all around. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to everyone who's basically been on this session to progressively be moving into e-commerce and to structuring their social media presence and their digital presence more effectively. Um, you know, there are so many platforms that are now coming up on opportunities for designers such as you know there's the shop career platform whereby designers could go online with them and have the opportunity with their payment options and delivery there's planting seeds there's we pay there are different platforms that designers can use and this is really the time now to move forward um so thanks so much for for just really an excellent and insightful session and just giving us the extra push to do what we have to do I'm, I'm actually creating a little challenge right now where I'm going to say the first four people to tweet, I love digital marketing and I love Domino's pizza and tag me and Domino's. <laughs> so we are giving away the pizza Twitter. now? We're, We're giving away the pizza now? Yes. I'm, I'm giving away four pizzas courtesy Domino's pizza and the first four people to head to Twitter and tweet, I love digital marketing, I love Domino's pizza and tag at Chris Scrage will receive a free fee. If you are not on Twitter, you don't qualify. <laughs> Sorry. No, dude, I'm not, many people not on Twitter, come on. It's an encouragement to get people on Twitter, which yeah, is what we said know. yesterday, we would come as a fashion, <laughs> move our fashion I don't know if Twitter it is so fashion fashion but okay all right we'll take care of um, what about ig twitter is easier to, to 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 quantify at this time so you have to you have to <laughs> i'm hearing not fair not fair uh, <laughs> all right so i guess only a few people so when you're here. already i love digital marketing yeah, so the first, so Wanya's already won herself a pizza. It's I love digital marketing. I love Domino's pizza, TT. So this is what it should look like. So I will reach, the Domino's page will reach out to you. Or I will reach out to you if you have one as the first four people to do it. And you guys have a great day. If you want, you should be able to collect your pizza at the nearest branch by this afternoon.